Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. So against the Costa Rican side, as you said, that's going through a transitional period. There will be fans in the stadium. They're going to try to feed yeah. off of that energy. Mexico has to take their chances. And Janelle, it must be nice for you, right? You were in a rainy stadium. Now you're in this <laughs> nice, comfortable setting here in the studio. It feels good, right? It might be a little bit colder here, actually. Guess what? Panama just scored. Okay, okay. See? Look at that against Jamaica. Remember that Jamaica, Jamaica now has eight players from England. Let's check it out. Back to our sets in New York, Kate Gooch, Clint and Charlie here with you. Listen, the boys have said it many times. The World Cup qualifying format is win your home games and pick up points on the road. So maximum points required tonight from the United States. They kick off their home campaign in Nashville against Canada. Jenny Chu is at the stadium for us. Let's take you out to her. Jenny, good to see you as always. What are the big headlines coming out of the U.S. camp right now? Well, official lineups come out in about an hour, but I can confirm that Christian Pulisic trained with the team yesterday, and the hope is that he will have a role in today's match. On the other hand, Gio Reyna did not train with the team, and his status is unknown. On the goalkeeping front, Zach Steffen didn't make that trip to El Salvador due to back spasms, and it has now been confirmed that he has tested positive for COVID-19, and he has been replaced on the roster with Sean Johnson. Johnson got to Nashville this morning, and he will be available for selection tonight. Remember, he was a part of that Gold Cup winning roster this summer. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Jenny. Appreciate it. We'll be back out with you in Nashville in a short while. Uh, so let's talk about that then. Gio Ray yeah. to take care of it. Why wait? I think it's madness. Uh, I was actually really looking forward to seeing that game. As you mentioned, it is the rematch of the Copa America final. I think the fan bases were ex excited about that matchup. It has such significance. In there absolutely is. Um, this is the first home World Cup qualifier for most of this team, and they are so excited. Greg Berhalter said this is the moment that they have been waiting for, and I can feel that vibe. I went into downtown Nashville last night to have dinner, and I saw so many U.S. national team jerseys and scarves. They're expecting nearly 40,000 fans in the stadium today. Uh, they're not here yet because we're still about 90 minutes from kickoff. But the weather is beautiful. It had been cloudy all day, and it's just opening up about five minutes ago, to be honest. The field is looking great. Kate, um, there was a game here, an MLS game here, on Friday, but it still looks great. And 90 minutes still kick, and there's already music pumping, people in jerseys and scarves. It should be a great home advantage, very much in contrast to the El Salvador match. And see, there's no shortage of Mexican-Americans who root for Mexico despite being born in America. Uh, that was a, a group of them from all over the country who sent in their videos uh, to us. Thank you very much to you guys if you're watching today. Uh, listen, on Thursday, we saw five American-born players on this El Salvador squad that played against the United States with the Roldan brothers, Christian and Alex, on opposing sides of the pitch. Crazy scenes. Mexico forward Rogelio Funes Mori hails from Argentina. Costa Rica's Ariel Lasseter played for the U.S. at youth level. Jamaica's got a group of players born in England as well. So dual national allegiance is, is a fact of life in CONCACAF. If you watch CONCACAF football, you definitely know that. In no rivalry is that more prevalent than in the U.S.-Mexico one. And there are some members of our team that live that issue every single day. And we've brought them onto the desk for you. So Adrian Garcia Marquez, uh, Moa Du, Janelli Farias, good to have you all with us. Uh, in Nashville as well, we've got Jenny Chu, who's in a similar situation. So just to give you guys at home some context to this, Adrian, you were born in, in Southern California to Mexican parents. You root for Mexico when it's a U.S.-Mexico rivalry, right? Uh, Janelli, you were born in the U.S. You play football uh, for the Mexican women's national team. You root for Mexico and, and, and play for them as well. Mo, an American of Nigerian heritage, you're also a father to a son whose mother is Mexican-American. You're a complicated case. Uh, <laughs> Jenny was born in El Paso, Texas, to Chinese and Mexican parents. She crossed the border to play for the Mexican national team, Roots for Mexico as well. Jenny, it's good to have you with us in this conversation. Janelle, let me start with you because you picked to play for the Mexican national team despite growing up on this side of the border, right? Was there an internal struggle for you? Which way do I go or was it always clear? And, and if so, why? You know, there was never an internal struggle. struggle. To me, uh, I was born in, in America. I'm so grateful for, for what that has given me and what I know it's going to continue to give me. But I was raised in a Mexican home, Mexican-born parents who, who came to America for a better world for themselves and for my brothers and I. And I think it's just about, it doesn't matter where you are born. What matters is just what drives you, what what lights your heart on fire. And for me, it's just being Mexican, it really has everything to do with who I am and what I'm about. 
Uh, Jenny, let's go out to you in, in Nashville. Why did your heart say Mexico and not anything else? Well, like I said, you know, in the El Salvador game, I loved both, and I did represent Mexico. I think my case is a little bit unique in the sense that I, I played for both national team pools uh, for many years, and then I eventually chose Mexico. My situation was that at the time, it's being a pool member for the U.S., and Mexico said, we will make you captain, and we will build this team around you. That's a completely different thing, but mm -hmm. both sides I'm so proud of and love so much. I feel you on that one. In this country, can you understand people at home that would feel like, hey, you're, you're not honoring that in return if you then choose to cross the border and, and play for Mexico because they're our biggest rivals. Do you, do you get that, Janelle? I do. I think uh, some, as somebody that lives it every day, right, born in America, I now live in, live in Mexico, in Mexico City, um, I sometimes feel like I don't belong. In, in America, like I don't belong, belong in Mexico. For example, when I speak English in Mexico, people are like, oh, like gringa, why is she speaking English if she's Mexican? And then I come to America and I speak Spanish. So like, wait, well, you know, why is she speaking Spanish? Um, and I think a lot of people can identify with this idea of like, ni de aquí, ni de allá, right? I feel like I'm not from here mm -hmm. nor from there, but that's okay. I think that in itself is, is a sense of belonging, belonging and being part of this and being part of this and just like you said, there's so, so much beauty in being a dual national, and I think that's what we need to focus on. A Adrian, just quickly, can you root for Mexico and love this country? Is that Absolutely, 150%. Uh, I, that's what I've been doing my whole life, you know, just rooting for everything United States, but also being very, very proud of being Mexicano 100%. So.